My heart has always been to help hurting people because I know that God has a purpose for your life. Let me go through with you what I would go through with any person that I'm trying to counsel about dealing with their depression and the basic causes that are very fixable and they don't require a lifetime of prescriptions and medication. And let's see if you can relate to one of these and get you on your path to a better life. There are two major causes of depression. The first is biological, and you can usually pinpoint those through some form of medical testing. And the second is a spiritual element. And I talk a lot about those different elements in the Amazingly Deep Thoughts vlogs, and so we try to deal through those on a deeper level, more specifically. And But today, before I go into those specific causes, I just want you to follow me on a journey. So let me take you on that journey. Imagine that you are in a car driving from west coast to east coast. And as you're driving along, you have gotten into a fog bank. I don't know if you've ever driven in one of those, but it's scary. You can't see more than a feet in front of you. And you just sit there thinking, am I gonna hit somebody? Am I gonna run into the car in front of me? And those who are experienced in driving, in driving the fog say, follow the white line. And to me, that white line is the Bible. And so one of my verses that I hold on to dearly is commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. And so even though you're tempted to pull off on the side of the road and wait till the fog subsides, don't do it. Just drive one step ahead of you. What you can see, go farther. Today, face today and say, today I'm gonna get up and I'm going to nourish my body. Today I'm gonna reach out and communicate with one person. Do what you can do today. Drive through what you can see a little bit at a time. And as everybody knows that a fog bank eventually ends and you will find yourself clear on the other side. And then as you go, you might find yourself climbing a mountain and it's a hurdle and it's a stress in life and you're wondering, why me? Why did I lose this person? Why did I lose this relationship? Why am I struggling with this element of my life? And it's a mountain. And as you climb up the mountain that seems so high, you find yourself in a cloud and you're in, you feel the same way that you did in the fog. You can't see, you feel hopeless, you feel empty. It's a vast nothingness and you just want to stop. You want to pull off on the side of the road, but I'm telling you, you have a gift and you have a purpose. And as you keep climbing up, you're going to be able to see again. I've seen it over and over in the depressed person's life that they come out and they do amazing things. They benefit people's lives because that same introspection and compassion and depth that goes within them can be shared to other people and it makes a difference. That, that graciousness, that gratitude, that gift of giving and that gift of planning or the gift of t teaching, that is there on purpose. And so yes, there are gonna be times of clouds where there is a nothingness and you know what? During that time, look at it as a chance to recover, but still keep moving forward daily do what you need to do and regain your strength and you will come out the person who can do what they need to do i want to tell you another story and this is true when i was going to get married something happened to where i needed to meet with the person who was coordinating my wedding or my wedding wasn't going to be able to progress and I lived up in the mountains and it was in January and there was a snowstorm, but I had to drive five hours down to meet with this person and I was terrified. And my soon to be mother-in-law, she said, I'm going to go with you. And as I'm driving along and there's this steep grade and you just see semis pulling off of the side of the road. And I was just, panicked and I thought, I can't see anything. And it was at that moment that I realized I hadn't even turned on my windshield wipers. 
And so I did. And you know what? My mother-in-law, she just sat there with me and she prayed with me and she was silent when I needed it to be silent. And she was friendly and chatty when things weren't as tense. And she was my friend in the car. And the point of that story is this, that every depressed person has a caregiver or family who doesn't quite know what to do when they're in the fog, when they're in this storm. This is my encouragement to you. Stay in the car. Don't try to get them to move faster. That's it. The depressed person who is in the middle of the fog, more than anything else, just needs a friend. Find out what their love language is and be their friend. If they're having a down day, then have a quiet day with them. Encourage them and say, you know what? I know that this is just how you are right now, but I remember you in the good times too. This isn't the embodiment of who you are. You are a much bigger person than this. And just be their friend. Don't try to change them. Don't criticize them. Don't try to talk them out of their feelings and their emotions. Don't try to rationalize why the fog for them isn't as big of a deal as they feel it to be. Just be their friend. Having said that, I want to go through the checklist with you that I would with any person struggling with depression. Because so much of this is fixable, is curable. And so the first thing that I generally ask somebody is I go through the biological questions and I say, how old are you? And that gives me an understanding of, are you dealing with any hormonal issues? Are you going through puberty? Are you pregnant? Is this postpartum? Are you in perimenopause or menopause? And understanding that your hormones do affect you. I remember one time after I had had my son, I sat in the car and I said, I need everybody to just to just go in the house because there is something wrong with me. I am so full of rage and I have no idea what it is. And so I called my midwife and I said, I'm just calling because I think I might be going crazy. And she said, well, tell me what's going on. And I said, I just have this crazy rage and nobody has done anything. And she said, well, you do realize that you just had four children in a row, and this is the first time you haven't been pregnant in a long time. Maybe your body's trying to find out what's normal. And I, and that was the first time that I realized, wait, hormones aren't really a joke. They actually make a difference. So if you are having a time where your hormones are transitioning, understand that this too will pass and let your body find it's normal or speak to your doctor to find a hormonal supplement that can help balance you out a little bit. That's the first thing is hormones and that's what I ask. The second thing that I analyze is this, their nutrition level. Are they underweight or are they overweight? Because malnourishment is a big deal. Are you eating vegetables. You would be amazed how many people don't eat vegetables and yet your body craves them. Your brain needs them to function at a healthy level emotionally. You need vegetables. You need magnesium and potassium and calcium and you need your iron for from protein and yet we I have found so many women are malnourished and it has drained them of all of their energy and their strength from their brain and it takes them into depression. And so I would look at their diet and say, okay, are you having a healthy diet? Another element of your nutrition is this, are you feeding yourself with sugar? Is that where your energy comes from? Because sugar brings you in the blood sugar highs and the blood sugar lows, and then you feel like you're crashing, and so you have more blood, you have more sugar, and it brings you in this cycle of destruction to your body. And so I would look at your sugar intake and say, how much sugar are you eating? And I'm not just saying refined sugars, I'm saying how much how much are you eating of fruits and, 
and your carbs and your your drinks and smoothies and dairy look at your sugar intake because that really affects your emotions artificial sweeteners have been known to cause depression and so I would look and say are you do you drink a lot of diet sodas or or calorie free drinks because that will impact you and I know these seem silly and insignificant but I would but if I was you I would assess your diet and begin to educate yourself on what a nutritive diet is and start eliminating those things that are that are detrimental to your mental health and your physical well-being and start adding those vegetables and that meat and that iron that will help give you the strength that you need to go through the day after i ask your age and then i assess your nutritional well-being the next thing i want to find out is do you have any chronic illnesses or chronic allergies or chronic pain because those things wear on you the hardest part of an illness is when it gets in your head and you just think wow i really can't do anything I kind of am not adding anything into this world and I am a drain to the people around me. Does that sound familiar? Because those are the those are the words that a depressed person hears and yet when you are chronically ill, it is actually a reality. You know that you are a drain on the people around you. You know there are things that you should be accomplishing and yet you can't. You literally can't and not everybody understands that and as I talked about the person the friend in the car be that friend because it's discouraging when you desperately want to do something and yet you can't even get out of bed and so I would just say do what you can do if you have a chronic illness do what you can do if all you can do is pray Pray. Do what it takes to nourish your body. Do what it takes to strengthen your body. Increase your flexibility. Move a little bit every day. But just do what you can do. And trust that for some reason God has allowed this in your life. I think about Johnny Eric Sentata and how she's a paraplegic and yet she does what she can do. And if you pray and you say, God, you have allowed me to be severely physically limited, but I ask you to give me a something, a something to make a difference in the world. I am still breathing, so you have a purpose for me. Give me the something I can do to make a difference in somebody's life today and do that little something. The next two biological symptoms are very much integrated with our spiritual element of our life and our soul and they are a lack of sleep and, ad and adrenal fatigue and those usually come because of the spiritual element and so I want to transition now into the spiritual side of things if you have checked all the boxes no 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 none of those biological physical issues are your scenario then let's move over to this next side and see if you might be struggling here the first thing I want to talk about is bitterness Bitterness has been shown to cause blindness in people, to cause ulcers, to cause migraines. Bitterness has physical effects in your life. If you are struggling with a person that you haven't forgiven, it is a poison that you drink and yet you are hoping it's going to hurt the other person and yet instead it starts killing you from the inside out. I'm not going to talk about how to deal with that now. I have talked about that in blogs and also I've touched upon it in a few videos, but bitterness is a big one you need to be aware of. Is there somebody that right now, if you said, Lord, is there somebody that I am bitter at? And you immediately think of a person, even if it's questionable, don't doubt that God put that in your heart for a reason and you need to deal with it. The second spiritual issue is that of fear and anxiety and worry. And that will keep you up at night. That will cause your body to never rest 
because you haven't gained the skills to learn how to find peace, to learn how to implement your faith and to have a shield of faith that can help you to rise above those situations in your life and to calmly walk through them with that peace that you need. And so I talked about those in the videos on how to deal with stress and anxiety. So I would recommend that you go watch those, but never underestimate how those will impact your health so much that it brings you into a fog of emptiness just because you need to shut down. A next area that happens to so many people is the area of volatile relationships, abusive relationships, unresolved conflict in relationships, and just not knowing how to deal with people in those situations. We find people who are in the fight or flight scenario. I very often see people who, because they don't have the skills or the patience to talk through a problem with somebody, that they find themselves over here cloistered up where they just either don't talk to somebody or they're constantly jabbing them with these passive aggressive comments. They call it sarcasm. But really it's because they don't know how to deal with those inner thoughts and so they're just trying to get them out and see if anybody will take the bait and and it hurts people because they they feel hurt so they're gonna hurt people and pick at them and so there are the people on this side who are the flight where they don't want to deal with conflict but it keeps seeping out and then you have the fight side of the the conflict where very often this person finally will get to a point where they just can't handle it anymore or maybe the people they keep jabbing approach approaches them and says I noticed that you keep saying these things I feel like there's probably something wrong can we discuss it and because that person hasn't yet learned how to communicate properly they go into fight mechanism and they blow up and they start having all of these emotional responses and it's not logical at all but they just start attacking the person well you're this and you're this and you do this and you and you said that and 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 it becomes a fight and so it's very important if you struggle with conflict management to i think that i'm gonna do a topic on that on conflict management and how to communicate peacefully peacefully it's very possible to if you have peace in your heart and you want peace to be able to work through problems in a logical and kind manner um, but if you deal if you live with somebody who also is in that fight and flight mechanism and you find that you can't communicate to them it can cause you to retreat within yourself and and really again go to that bitterness unless you learn how to forgive and take things to the Lord and really just release that and live independently emotionally between you and the Lord. And while we're talking about relationships, you, you know how the Bible says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. It's talking about church and our need to go to church and our need to fellowship. And in Romans 12, it says that we need to reach out to each other with hospitality because it is true that when one coal is with the group of coals, they will stay hotter and warmer longer. But if that coal goes out on its own, it gets ex extinguished quickly. And that's how we are as people. And if you're an introvert and you find people that are, and you find that people are draining, it is harder for you to want to fellowship. But you will find that in that fellowship of going to church and saying hello or reaching out to a friend, you can make a difference in other people's lives. And just that act of getting outside of yourself and reaching out, fellowshipping and hearing the word of God and singing the praises of the Lord brings that coal back in there and reignites what God put in you. That desire to make a difference and to be a soul winner and to use your spiritual gift. And so a lack of fellowship is another reason for depression. I have two more that I'm going to talk about. First is a lack of vision and that goes very much 
with that lack of fellowship. My grandmother was a shut-in and she couldn't make it to church, but she faithfully listened to that radio broadcast and she would invite friends over to her house for times of fellowship and she would call friends and she would call family and she was constantly reaching out and she had a way to make a difference in the world. She was a giver. What she could do, she would do. She would sacrifice of her own to reach out and make a difference. She had things that needed to be repaired in her house and she wouldn't repair them, but yet she would just make sure every single grandchild had a birthday card and a Christmas card and she would give gifts as she could. And so she had a vision even though she was limited physically. And sometimes the depressed person feels like they are so limited that they can't see beyond themselves. They have no vision. They feel like, I can't fulfill the Great Commission. I can barely even make my breakfast. And yet when you pray and ask God for the vision for your life, maybe he'll say little as much when God is in it. How about you write some cards to some missionaries? How about you give $20 to that family over there? How about you pray for this person? How about you write notes of encouragements to the, to the bus kids or, or to make a goodie basket for a missionary family who, who's struggling? You can do something if you have the heart to give. And so when you lack vision that is bringing you down, I would earnestly ask you to pray and ask God to give you a vision of what you can do a little bit each day to reach out. And the last one is sin and guilt and the open doors to the devil in your life. If you haven't watched my video on how to deal with the voices in your head, I would go and watch that now. If you've checked everything else off that these things don't apply to you, go watch that video. Because chances are that if none of this applies to you, that there is probably a sin in your life that you are just holding on to. I don't know what it is, but if there is some sin in your life, I would plead with you that you would watch that video and that you would get alone with the Lord and seek his face and repent from that sin. But sin is one of the biggest reasons for depression because that guilt steals the fellowship of the Lord from you. And the great abiding strength of our life is that day-to-day -day fellowship with the Lord. You need to guard your fellowship with the God who is your strength and your shield and your high tower and your buckler. He is the hen who would love to cover you with his wings if only you would humbly come to him. And so those are the major causes for depression. They are tangible, they are fixable. And I would encourage you, if you need some help, to, to reach out. I really hope this was a help. Um, keep on keeping on.